What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and this is it. iOS 9 is finally being released. So in this video, I wanted to do a full review of iOS 9, show you the biggest changes, some of the smaller ones, and give you guys a good idea of whether or not you would want to update. And let me give you a hint, you probably will. iOS 9, although it doesn't look very different on the surface, this thing brings a plethora of changes underneath the skin. Everything is different. Even though it looks the same, functionality in almost every corner of the iOS is improved. Now, when you first install iOS 9, you'll notice that it looks nearly identical to iOS 8. There's a couple key differences though in the looks department. First off, the San Francisco font. It's been updated from the Apple Watch and it's very elegant. It looks modern. As for the interface, there's a couple changes. If you slide to the right, you now have a Siri Spotlight view. And other than that, really there's nothing different. App Switcher is the new view as well. It's a 3D card view, so it's a little bit faster to operate and close applications. Even Siri gets a new view but overall, it's just the same. And you'll notice that most of the changes in iOS 9 don't come in terms of design, but functionality. There's about 15 new wallpapers included in iOS 9. The only thing I don't like is that Apple removed a lot of the nicer, older ones, such as the Earth Globe, and I wasn't very happy with that. But iOS 9 visually is great. It builds upon iOS 8, and it improves them. There's a few new icons that have changed, but you'll be very familiar with iOS 9 while there's so much to learn, and let's go ahead and jump right into that iOS 9 supports the iPhone 4S, and that alone was a huge surprise. And the basic focus of iOS 9 is to improve stability, improve performance, and improve battery life. Apple has made good on all of those on the newer devices. You'll be very happy to learn that iOS 9 actually reduces the amount of storage required to update. So that's great news for smaller gigabyte devices. Now, iOS 9 primarily plays catch up with Android. It introduces a lot of features that Android has had for years already, such as low power mode. Low power mode brings four hours of extra functionality to your device. There's now a search in settings and you can finally control the resolution of your camera. Although you have to do it through the settings application, which really sucks. Why do I have to go here to change the resolution for the camera? But that's great that Apple is finally playing catch up with some of these small features. It just baffles me why Apple hasn't added them sooner, but I'm happy they did finally add them. Now you can actually do math using Siri or your search function locally on your device without having to use Wolfram Alpha. There's a new card view for the app switcher, which is actually more efficient for closing applications faster and switching to applications that's a lot faster in terms of animations. However, it's very reminiscent of Android's card view just in a different view. So I thought that was interesting. Now Maps has received Transit, which Android has had forever. And like I said, it's these little things that Apple is adding from Android that it's had for so long that makes iOS a better experience. I just don't understand why it took Apple so long to add them. Now here are the two biggest features in iOS 9, split screen multitasking and picture in picture. Unfortunately, they're iPad exclusive. This is very unfortunate because the iPhone 6 Plus is capable of doing this as the jailbreak has shown us. Apple just wants to push iPad sales, so they're keeping this an iPad exclusive, and it's very sad because on a larger display like the 6 Plus, it totally makes sense to be able to do this. It increases productivity, and all around, it'd be a better experience in iOS 9. Now, these features are so exclusive that they're only available on the most powerful iPad. So if you have an older iPad, you can't actually get them. So the split screen multitasking is exclusively for the iPad Air 2. The picture in picture is only for the iPad Air and above. Now these features are nice, but they're only available on a select few iPads. And here's what really sucks. Apple actually removed the keyboard trackpad because they said it doesn't make sense on an iPhone. So it's exclusive to iPad as well. iOS 9 has gained some bloatware as well. So there's a couple new applications that you cannot uninstall. This is very similar to Android. So uh, it sucks that you can't uninstall them, but there are only two, you know, it's not that bad. There's also a new news application. So in here, this is Flipboard on iOS, except it's native. So it's a very well-made news application. It's very pleasant to read news on here. It's a completely optional optimized for the display, things just pop, there's a lot of animations, pictures look so great in this news application, and you can tailor it just for your news needs. I absolutely love it. You'll definitely find yourself using this application instead of any third party one. Siri has now gone proactive. So Siri is so much more intelligent in iOS 9. She's also received a completely new redesign, which is brilliant. So she is now contextually aware. Depending on where you're at, she's gonna offer you different applications in the suggestions. You know, you can make so much more demands of Siri 
theory that you couldn't before to remind you at a certain location to do something at a certain time. And what's really cool, if you plug in headphones, depending on where you're at, it'll suggest a different application for you depending on your pattern. So she pretty much learns your usage. And on the very left of your home screen, you'll get your Siri search. In here, you'll have applications depending on your usage. Again, this is very contextual. So depending on where you're at on the time of day, you'll have different applications offered here. That's really cool. Now mark my words, this is how Skynet is born. <laughs> Anyways, so overall, Siri receives a huge upgrade. And guys, I'm just being very brief with Siri. There is so much she can do now. Now, one of my favorite features in iOS 9 is back to search. Whenever you're redirected from a link or an application, you'll have a quick shortcut to go back to where you were before you were redirected. That's very convenient. Now, Siri is so powerful in iOS 9 that she can recommend a different music application depending on different headphones that you use at different times. That's how contextually aware Siri can be. In iOS 9, the keyboard has received some new shortcuts, so it's become a little bit more convenient to use, not to mention now it displays lowercase keys. So you now have a cut and paste option over here and the notes application it has received a complete overhaul. There are now so many new things you can do on it, including drawing, putting in pictures and previewing links. It's very convenient just how much Apple has worked on a new notes application. For me, one of the best improvements in the iOS 9 notes application is the ability to doodle, draw straight lines, and overall you can just mark up your notes. When you're taking notes, I learned a little better when I can actually draw on them and make custom points. And it's really awesome just how elaborate the notes application is now. Apple has made some great improvements to the photos application. You can now quickly swipe through many photos with that little timeline slider on the bottom, easily drag down out of photos, very convenient. There's no more email limit on photos. You can now send over five. Now there's actually an individual screenshots and selfies folder, which is great for organizing all of your selfies and screenshots, of course. And did I mention selecting many photos at once has become so much easier? Yeah, that's great. Now the maps application is something I use every single day and Apple has added a lot of love to the maps application. There's now points of interest. So this is very convenient to find different things around you, such as food or shopping locations, and even depending on what you want to shop for, it's become very great to search for those things. Now also transit, public transit, of course, it's very convenient for people in larger cities and Apple's actually created 3D flyovers of the actual transit stations to make it easier for you to find the nearest exit or entrance. Now Apple Maps has gained some Waze-like features, so it will actually notify you of hazards on the road and it'll let you know before you leave how long it'll take to get home, just depending on your usage patterns. So if there's traffic, it'll be a different time than when there isn't. So let's talk battery life. This is one area where Apple made so many improvements to iOS. There's now that low power mode. Now alone, iOS 9 increases battery life on all devices by one hour. With low power mode, you can extend the battery life by four extra hours and it doesn't completely cripple your device. You can still use most of the functionality. It just trims it down a little bit. So things such as data and the display are actually a little bit lower. So not only that, but iOS 9 increases storage and combined with app thinning, it gives you a lot of your storage back that you paid for. Now with 4K video, 16 gigabyte devices just aren't cutting it anymore, but app thinning and the iOS 9's lower update sizes help a little bit. So how's the performance? Well, on older devices, I'm disappointed to say iOS 9 feels like a downgrade. And this is the case for every major update for lower end devices. Of course, they have less memory to handle the newer features and operating system. And the iPhone 4S feels very sluggish on the iOS 9 GM. However, iOS 9.1 is said to remedy a lot of the slugginess. It's supposed to be a lot faster than iOS 9. And as with every update on a lower device, you wanna make sure to wait until things are ironed out. Don't update right away, you will regret it. Just like users upgrading to iOS 8 from 7.1.2 did regret it. Opening applications and doing things, there's just a slugginess to everything. It's a lot slower and less fluid. So I would recommend you don't update right away. Wait until iOS 9.1 fixes all the issues that iOS 9 initially launches with. Now, who should update to iOS 9? If you want all the latest features and you want them now, you should probably update. Not only is the battery life better, you get more storage returned to your device. Now, I wouldn't recommend the 5 or 4S update just yet. Any newer device than that, you should update. And I actually have videos on my channel showing the performance of iOS 9 compared to 8.4.1, and I'll be testing the final version as well. So overall, iOS 9 is a fantastic update. Most of the big features are actually hidden, believe it or not. 
I haven't even shown you 10% of everything that's new in iOS 9. And I have many hidden feature videos on my channel that show all of those smaller things Apple made updates to. So iOS 9 is very promising. Unfortunately, some of the best features are only available on iPads, but there's a lot to be happy about. And Apple's made some great improvements to this firmware, bringing it up to spec to Android. And a lot of the features that were missing are finally included. So I'm very happy Apple has made updates to that. Just don't update expecting a miracle. It's an evolution of iOS 8 with a lot of small changes sprinkled in and there's a lot of improvements to battery life and performance on the newer devices. I wouldn't update just yet on the older ones. You know, it's still a work in progress. So thanks for watching this video guys. And I do encourage you to watch my hidden features video. There's so much I haven't shown you of iOS 9 that you will see in that other video. Have a great day guys. Enjoy the iOS 9 update if you choose to update. Peace.